12 o'clock. So we should get started. Um, Una, can you, oh, looks like you're already recording. So um, welcome, I'm Liz Yada. I'm from um, the manager of open communities for CCCOER at part of um, Open Education Global. And I'm here with um, Rachel Artiaga, who is a librarian at Butte College up in Northern California. Um, I work remotely from Southern California. And this is our second um, timely OER tutorial. This week, it'll be on copyright and open licensing applied. So I think that's everything. So Rachel, you wanna go ahead and get started? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to talk about today and what we hope that you will learn um, is just understanding some of the limitations of copyright and then the difference between all rights reserved or copyright and then some rights reserved, which will be Creative Commons licenses. Um, and then how Creative Commons licenses are used for open educational resources or OER. And then we're also, Liz is going, going to show you how to actually search for materials using the license type. Okay, so I'm going to go for copyright really quickly, um, just so you kind of know how it relates to Creative Commons and um, the open licenses that we'll mostly be talking about. So copyright is an exclusive set of rights for whoever creates um, a work. So copyright holders, the person who owns copyright, they can copy, distribute, perform, adapt, or use the work, and then they give you permission if they want to let you do one of those things. So copyright was created um, in part to incentivize the creation of new work so that the person who creates the work gets to control that work and get some benefit from actually creating that work. So a little bit more about copyright. It's good to remember that someone controls the copyright. So this could commonly be a creator, an organization. Um, a lot of times a publishing company can control copyright, maybe your employer. And then the person who holds the copyright, they're the person who allows you permission to use the work in whatever way um, they might want to allow you. So you can think about copyright as all rights are reserved for the copyright holder. And just also think about that legally, that gives you a lot of power over what you can do with the work, which can, especially in the educational setting, cause um, just a lot of restrictions with what you can and can't do with certain resources. So copyright law is really complicated. There are copyright lawyers. Um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of the complicated ways that copyright, copyright law can and cannot be applied. I just want you to know um, what copyright does and doesn't allow. Okay, so just before we go into Creative Commons licenses, I wanted to talk about free resources. So free resources, which all of us probably use, um, they're freely accessible and most of the time they're copyrighted or restricted in some way. Sometimes you'll see, like especially if you're looking at an educational resource or something that's been created for educators, you'll see a copyright and then you'll see the ways or the permissions that you can and can't use it. So sometimes they'll say, you know, copyrighted, but you can distribute copies in an educational setting, um, or you need to get permission to distribute copies. Um, free resources, most likely because of the copyright, you cannot change them. You can't modify them um, or distribute them usually without permission. So like I said, there are some exceptions, but usually that's the limitation is you can use them freely as they are. So I get a lot of questions as a librarian about how people can use free resources and the best way is just to supply a link to your students um, so that you're that way you're, you're not 
violating any copyright is if you just let the student go to the resource and use it as is. Okay, so like I said, there's a lot of complications with copyright and also free resources. So a really good way to avoid complications and having to think about what you can and cannot do with a resource is to use OER, Open Educational Resources. So just a quick reminder of what those are, or if you're new to this, um, what you can do with something that's open. Um, we talk about the five R's or the five permissions of open, and they are retaining a work. So you can retain the work and your students can retain and own the work. So like at the end of the semester, they don't have to give it back. Um, they don't lose access. Um, you can reuse it in basically any way that you can think of. So you can photocopy it, you can just use a chapter, you, any way that you can think of reusing it is permissible. The really cool thing, especially for education, is that you can revise a work. So say you're using something that's open, but you notice there's some things that a little are a little bit outdated. You can actually update and improve the work so that when you share it with your students, um, they have the most up-to-date information. So you can adapt it and modify it and you're not violating any copyright. You can also remix things. Um, so say you find two open resources and one of them has something that you really like and another one has something that you really like, you can combine them into one resource without violating any terms of the license. You can also redistribute. So copyright, um, it prevents you from copying things and distributing them, but with open, you can distribute it basically any way you want. So online, print copies, however you can think, you can share with others. Okay. So now we're gonna go into Creative Commons licenses and all the things um, that they allow you to do legally. So Creative Commons is an organization and they were basically created because they saw the potential of online and how it could open up um, knowledge and sharing and creativity for people um, using online and resources. So they're a nonprofit organization and what do they do? So what they do is they provide Creative Commons licenses. And Creative Commons licenses, they work within copyright. So all the things that I talked about copyright law, Creative Commons licenses are not separate from that. They work in that. So the creator of something still retains copyright but what they're doing with the licenses is they're telling you the ways in which you have permission to use something. So Creative Commons supplies the license and it gives a legal framework that allows permissions for people to share things more openly. So you can think of Creative Commons as some rights reserved. Um, like I said, the creator is still retaining copyright, but they're opening up a lot of the things that copyright restricts. So Creative Commons licenses, they have different elements and I wanna go over each of those elements because once you understand what, you'll see them as either an icon or an abbreviation. Once you understand what that allows, you'll be able to know what each license gives you permission to do. So there are different elements, four different elements, and then each Creative Commons license, which there's six of them, is some combination of these elements. So the first one, and every Creative Commons license has this, is an attribution. So this means that you have to give credit to the creator, right? So that's the minimal thing that you have to do if um, you are sharing something with Creative Commons. So you'll see this as um, 
CC BY is the abbreviation, or you'll see the little person icon, and that just means give credit. Share a like, um, the little arrow. It means it's a little bit more complicated. It means if you are creating something new with something that has a Creative Commons share alike license, you have to reuse the same license. So you have to relicense your product with the share alike license. It sounds more complicated than it is, but when I go over that specific license, I think it'll be more clear. Um, so you really only have to worry about it if you are creating things that have this license. The non-commercial license basically prohibits making a profit off of something with this license. Um, you don't have to worry about, so for example, my college, Butte College, is, college will print some things um, for instructors that need to be printed OER and the bookstore will you know, charge for that. And if there's a non-commercial license, it's fine because they're not making a profit. They're ba basically just charging um, like cost. Um, so you do kind of want to notice non-commercial, but it's not necessarily going to stop you from having students print um, something. It just means that you can't make a bunch of money off of something. Um, the no derivatives, the last element, is a little bit more confusing and it's technically not open because if something has an ND or no derivatives license, it means that you cannot change the work. You can't break it up. You have to use it as is and as a whole. So technically that's not open because it doesn't allow you to remix um, different things. So the no derivatives is the license, the no Creative Commons license that you kind of want to watch out for just because there are more limitations to it. And I will go over that more. Um, ooh, okay, have eight minutes. Okay, so this is the continuum of the licenses and you can see it's the most open is CC BY um, and then CC BY share alike, um, non commercial, share alike, non commercial, and then the two licenses at the bottom that are the least open, those are the ND or no derivatives licenses, and they're technically not OER. So these are the most limiting, and when you are looking at resources, if you want to use, just know that it, if it has an ND, there are limitations on how you can use it. Basically, you have to use it as is, as a whole. You can't change it. Okay, so like I said, CC BY, I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly. CC BY, or the attribution license, is the most open. The minimal that you have to do is credit the creator, um, but you can do anything you want with it after that. So you can distribute it, remix it, um, you can try to make a profit off of it if you wanted to. Um, and if you're creating new works and you want to license them with the Creative Commons license, this is a license that people in the open community recommend because it's the most open. You can do the most with it. So the CC by share alike, anything with the share alike symbol, the SA, it means that if you're creating something new that has this license, so you're using something that already has this license, you have to license your new work with the same license. So only really worry about the share alike if you are creating new things. So anything with a share alike has to have the same license. So there's also share alike non-commercial attribution, CC by NCSA. 
Um, so you can't make a profit. And again, you have to license with identical license if you're creating something new. Okay. So the last two licenses are the no derivatives or the attribution. Um, no derivatives is this one. So again, it means that you have to use whatever the resource is unchanged and as a whole. So these are technically not open. And then this is the most restrictive license. You cannot change it and you cannot make a profit off of it. Okay, so I wanted to explain a little bit more about how you can and cannot use the ND um, license works. So, you can, like I said, you can use them as a whole if you don't change them. So that means that you can use ND license works if you're creating a collection. Um, so say maybe like an anthology, you can use an ND license work within a collection so long as it's whole and unchanged. So say you can use something with um, a CC BY, like the TV dinner, and it could be included with something with the CC BY ND, um, but you cannot do anything to change something with an ND license. So you can't pull out a chapter and include it in a collection. You have to include the whole work. Um, as opposed to something that is an adaptation, which you cannot do with no derivatives, um, you cannot mix them all up like a smoothie, um, combine all the licenses. You have to pull out, use it as a whole. So that's kind of the analogy that I think best explains what you can and cannot do with a ND license. Okay, in my last few minutes, I'm going to talk about attributions. So, like I said, every Creative Commons license needs to be attributed to the creator. So, you can kind of think of them as similar to citations, but they're a lot easier. And you want to think about the reader or the user of the resource. So, you want to include as much detail as necessary to supply the right information so your user can reuse the work or find the original work or whatever it is. Um, so you might not find all the information um, that I'm gonna go over for an attribution, so just include what you can. Um, since these are works created by people, sometimes they don't have all the exact right information. Just remember there's no strict formula, formula like a citation does um, you just have to include some minimal information. So to remember what that is, there's an acronym TASSEL. And this stands for title, so the title of the work, the author or the creator, so who you're giving credit to, the source, so the link to the resource, and then what the license is. So the link to the license deed. And the license deed is, if you go back to the previous slides, it's actually the legal, like the legal wording of the license. If you need help with writing attributions or you wanna build one and embed an attribution, for example, there's something called the Open Washington Attribution Builder. And what you do is you just put in the information that you have, so the title, um, author source, what the license is, and it will create the license for you written out nicely and also the code if you want to embed it. So that's really nice. Okay, I think that's it for my slides. So I'm going to stop sharing so Liz can share now. Okay, great, thanks. So let me present. So before I get into sharing, okay, there we go. 
I just wanted to use uh, to show everybody an example of copyright in the wild. So uh, probably most of you are familiar with Instagram. Um, you may be familiar with Flickr. Um, Instagram is an example of something that's free but not open. So um, you know anybody can see those pictures, but they are there is copyright on them. Um, I looked up at uh, Instagram's copyright page and who the people who upload it do have their copyright um, with Flickr um, Flickr lets uh, the up, people who upload the pictures decide what copyright they want so you can go to Flickr and search for photos that are in the public domain or creative commons so when you're looking for photos that's something to uh, keep in mind my computer is really slow today Come on. Okay, there we go. So next, I want to talk about searching for images on Google. Um, you can search for things on Google that are um, that are openly licensed. So I'll go ahead and go to Google. Um, and we want to search. <clears throat> right now, I just want to show a image search. So I'll click on this images button here. And I'll search for open book. You can see we get lots of things, but we don't know what the license is for any of these. So what you do is you go up here to settings and you go to advanced search. And we have to scroll all the way down to usage rights and it's not filtered by license right now. So um, they don't have the CC licenses written out, but you have, so you have to kind of figure out um, which one? So, like free to use, share, or modify, even commercially, that's the most open one here. So, that's probably CC BY or something similar. So, we'll click advanced search. It'll take me back. And so now we have um, slightly different results. And you can see, like, um, you know, comments from Wiki Wikimedia. Um, Pexels is a site with a lot of openly licensed things. Um, so you can see that now you have um, now you have um, openly licensed options, but you still need to know what the license is. So this one says Flickr.com. I'll click on that. takes it takes me to the page, and I can see down here of Flickr. It says some rights reserved, and so I find out that this one has a generic uh, attribution um, 2.0 license. So that then when you um, then you can um, attribute it if you use this picture. Another thing that Google does is you can actually search by image. So um, there's a recent um, blog post on a CCC OER website, and there's this picture here. We did put the attribution in, of course, but if um, they didn't, what you do is you can you have to get the URL, so I'll say open a new tab, and I got I can get the um, the URL. So I'll copy that. I'll go back to Google, and you can either you can also upload an image if you have downloaded it and you just don't know where it is, and you don't know if it's open. So I'll do a search by image. Okay, and it found it. So. Um, we don't care about any of the, the stuff visually so much, but pages that include matching images. So the first ones, these these don't look like any kind of um, image. Oh, but then this one is um, Wikimedia Commons. So click on that one, and you know down at the bottom it has all this information, and it gives me the source. So I can find go mending out back at Flickr. And there's the source, and we can figure out the license. It's by Alan Levine. I don't know. <laughs> so that's um, one way to search for openly licensed images. Um, another thing, if, if you want to search, so that's for images. Now, if you want to search for OER, there's this great um, search engine, um, which a lot of you, I think, are from New York. So you're probably aware that um, SUNY Geneseo has Oasis. Um, and this is specifically for OER. So let's see. So what's something that looks like last time I did this, we were looking for early childhood development. So 
I'll click on search. And it's bringing up 18 responses. Um, and the great thing about Oasis is that it's a search engine built specifically for OER. So um, you can filter your results. So you can filter by this one, it's just open access book and textbooks are the two types. There are a lot more types than that. Um, you can go into the subject, um, the source, like uh, one, one of these is from BC campus, one of these College Canyons, you can filter that way. You can also filter by the license. So um, we've got, you know, non-commercial attribution, um, another non-commercial, they wrote it a different way. And you can also see, look for reviewed resources. So if I click on that one, I come up with the textbook from BC campus and that one has a review. So that's one of the great things about OER is that you can get peer reviews to so know that it's um, a good, good book and that takes you to the BC campus page. Um, another thing to note is that up here, there is an icon legend because there are all these um, icons. So if you're ever confused, um, you can go ahead and figure all that out. You can also, you know, filter this way. So um, if you have another search term, you can look at that one up. Um, does anyone have, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Does anyone have any questions about Oasis or did you all, did you all know about it already? <laughs> Okay, Rachel Briggs didn't. Okay, very cool. And we will be sharing, a, a, I did have a slide for that. So, um, okay, good. So um, I we will be sharing the slides so you can get the, the link. Um, here it is right here. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, did uh, anyone have any questions um, on any of the, material today? Yes, Kara, we will be um, sending out the, the slides to everyone who registered and we'll, we are recording this, so we'll send you out the recording. Um, Rachel asking about Google Images. Yes, so the license may not be correct. You do need to go visit the page and make sure you can verify the, um, the, the source. It, it is a little bit more work than going to like uh, Pixabay, which everything, well, it's not openly licensed, but they have their own licenses basically open. Okay, any other questions? <laughs>